All right, well, uh, I'm gonna get us started and if we have others that join in uh, as we go, that'll be great. Um, so uh, thank you everyone for attending. I'm gonna see if I can share screen real quickly. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna drop two links in the chat that you're gonna see in the PowerPoint tonight. So the first is coming here. So the, the first link that I've just uh, dropped in is the registration. If you um, have not had a chance to do that and, and want to or anything like that, that link gives you, it actually gives you some of the information that I'm gonna talk through tonight, but then it also uh, has a, at the very bottom a registration link. I, um, I've had to register, I've gone through it. It's relatively simple. And then the other link I'm gonna drop is to a book that we're gonna ask you to, if you end up coming on the trip, we're gonna ask you to consider um, getting this book ahead of time. So let me, with that in mind, share my screen. All right, so hopefully you can see this. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do, uh, just as a, a quick intro, uh, y'all are familiar with me. Uh, my name is Jonathan, I'm the pastor at Herndon United Methodist Church. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself though, in case uh, and as folks are joining on, uh, we know that uh, this is a joint trip that we're doing together with Crossroads United Methodist. And so uh, folks from Crossroads who may not have been able to attend either presentation may be watching this. So if we haven't met, my name's Jonathan, uh, and it's good to good to be together uh, on Zoom to talk a little bit about journeying to the Holy Land. So um, if, if you don't mind, I'm gonna just go around uh, the room real quick and allow us to just say your name real quickly and um, the, the church that you're connected with, and then maybe what, what is most interesting to you about the idea of traveling to the Holy Land. So um, I'm gonna start with Joanne here. You're, you're on my screen first. Um, very cool. Um, I'm Joanne Badiger. I, uh, the church I'm connected with is Hernan UMC. Um, and I'm interested in going to the Holy Land. I've only traveled internationally once, uh, once previously. And so um, I'm very interested. I love traveling to places where you can kind of put yourself in the positions of um, stories that you've heard or pieces of history that you've um, experienced. And so, um, having an MDiv and studied this for a long time, I'm really interested to um, be able to kind of just walk and to really feel embodied both in the scripture and in person um, as best we can. So, Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Melissa, how about you? Oh, and it looks like you might have a George come in sit, to sit next to you. Yes, he just came in. Um, Melissa Billman and George Billman, my husband, um, from Herndon, and I'm interested because um, we've done two trips uh, to the Holy Land, uh, one with a EO tour that was a, a cruise uh, from Rome to uh, the Holy Land and stops in between, and then we did a VIM trip uh, to the Ho just to the Holy Land a couple of years ago, and it's just very inspiring to be able to um, see and touch and feel the places that um, all, all those people in the Bible were at. Uh, so that's, and you can't get it in one trip. Right here. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Chad. Um, hi. Um, so I'm Chad Herbeck. Um, I once was part of Herndon. Now I'm out in the Winchester District um, at Belltown Church and Old Bethel Church. As well, actually, I'm not in the Winchester District. I said that wrong. Now I'm in the Shenandoah River District, and I also work in the office for the district. Um, but I, I teach lots of Bible studies, and um, just someplace I would like to, would have wanted to go. Um, we tend to do a lot of Adam, Adam Hamilton studies, and we get to see where him in those places. But I'd like to talk about it firsthand for myself, and actually see be there and as melissa said touch touch the things and walk the footsteps and and really experience it um so when i was first starting ministry bishop pennell would take the war nation classes and so i said oh i'll be able to go at some point so you know, that was about 20 years ago and i still haven't gone so um it's something i want to do <laughs> awesome thank you chad uh, lisa how about you uh, yeah, I like to travel. I've never been to the Holy Land. I've, I did a 
trip looking at all the Wesley sites in England and, and all of that um, and found the history to be interesting. Um, I also love seeing cultural artifacts, things that are the, on the softer side, not just statues and buildings, but also like evidence of how did people, what were people's lifestyles like then? What are their lifestyles in that area now? Um, so, uh, and I and I go to Herndon United Methodist Church. Thank you, Lisa. And last but not least, uh, Ruth, aka Mom. Oh, you just muted yourself. Okay, sorry. Am I on okay. mute? You're, you're, we can hear you now. Okay. I uh, thought I couldn't come tonight to this one, but I, I, I can. I, I can also turn off my phone, so sorry. And um, sorry. It might be ringing on your computer, too. Oh, gosh. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um. Now I've lost the screen. There we go. Um, I wanted to go for a long time, and I did enjoy hearing Tim last week talk about the trip and thought I'd like to hear a, more about it. And so that's why I'm tuned in. And I've just wanted to go to the Holy Land for a long time and uh, have talked with you about it before going. Mm -hmm. And um, would like to, um, it's always a challenge to try to put oneself his, in the history of the time that Jesus walked on earth and to be there, I think would just enhance those understandings. So. Thank you for sharing. Well, and I will also share the reason that I'm really interested in, in traveling to the Holy land is, is similar to a lot of y'all. So I actually have never been either. Um, but that's one of the benefits of, I think, getting to uh, co-lead with somebody like uh, Tim Ward from Crossroads, who has been before, um, and some of you have been before, some of you haven't, right? So it's that intermingling of experience and really getting to live the story, right? And and to see stories that can come to life and to do that together, I think is a is a real gift. So before we jump into the rest of uh, tonight, I would love to offer an opening prayer for us, and then we'll uh, go through a couple of, well, this will be a lot of information, a lot of logistics, but hopefully a lot of stuff. Will come from it. So would you join me as we pray? And I want to thank you so much for tonight and for this gathering and this opportunity you've given us to share ideas and dreams of what may be coming in the future, specifically around this opportunity to visit the Holy Land. God, we're praying that tonight would be informative, that it would be fruitful, and most of all, that it would point us to the opportunities you may be guiding us towards together and together, not only with each other, but with you. We love you, God, and we thank you for this time. We offer it to you in your son's name. Amen. So what's going to be really interesting about this trip, I think, especially for folks coming from the Herndon community, is a couple of different things. So my understanding is we haven't taken a trip from Herndon in several years, at least, maybe maybe as long as a decade ago. Um, and so this is the first time in a while that we've uh, had this opportunity to go together. But a couple of things that I would want to clarify for us. So this isn't a mission trip. It's not a, a vacation. It's it's really meant to be a pilgrimage. And the idea behind this is that, that we're going overseas to this space to really be able to grow in our faith, to grow in our study of scripture, and to grow in how we build community together. Um, it's not meant to be a time for a lot of work. It's not meant to be a time for, um, you know, a lot of like random sightseeing sorts of things. We really, we've we'll go over tonight, the itinerary, and it's a relatively specific itinerary that allows us to see a focused number of things together, um, but with the intention of how how can this help us in our own development of faith and our understanding of, of God, of each other, and the world that we live in. Um, for those of us coming from Herndon, kind of a special treat of this trip. Um, so, so tonight we're going to talk about both the Holy Land trip, and then there's an extension that we're, uh, Tim and I are going to be leading uh, to Egypt that's a part of the Exodus narrative. So it's going to be especially interesting for us from Herndon because next Lent, our sermon series is all about Exodus. And so we're going to do Exodus in worship together and then some of our discipleship endeavors, and then we'll actually be able to go over and see it together. And that's that'll be a neat thing and uh, just another layer of this, excuse me, for one moment. 
I'm so sorry. So some of you are aware I have pneumonia right now. And so I may mute myself to cough and I'll do my best to also shut off my screen so you don't have to watch that. Um, so most of the trip is group based. What that means is those of us who elect to travel are going to be riding on a bus together. We're going to be staying in the same hotels um, and we're going to be having a, a shared experience. That doesn't mean that it's exclusively together. There are moments on the trip where you'll be able to have some free time to go shopping. Um, we'll talk about in a few minutes about lunches are independent. We'll often do that as a group, but you may have some, some options there as well. Um, before we leave, uh, something that I would really encourage is to a, a resource. I dropped this into the chat earlier and I'll drop it again before we leave tonight um, for those who came a little bit late. But um, this is a book called The Illustrated Guide to the Holy Land. Uh, by Lamonte Luker. It's a, a really good way to sort of orient yourself to some of the uh, setting that is over in Israel and, and just to, to have some familiarity with some of the stories that we'll be sharing and some of the content that'll be a part of the trip. Um, before I leave this slide, I want to mention if anybody at any point has any questions, feel free to just chime in and say, hey, I, I need to ask something. Um, I'm going to do my best to answer any questions you may have. There may be questions that we come up with tonight that I don't have the answer to that I would then uh, talk with our representatives at EO about in case that happens. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the itinerary. So uh, the main trip, uh, the Holy Land uh, experience runs from April 18th through April 27th of 2023. Um, to give you an idea, that's about, uh, it's about a week after Easter. We leave on a Tuesday. Um, and so it's uh, Easter is on April 10th. And so it's a good time of year to be traveling. Um, so all of our travel is going to be based out of uh, Washington Dulles Airport. So when we get to this conversation about fees, um, if you're if you're flying with us, uh, that that is all going to happen, you know, 15 minutes down the road from from our church. Um, the 18th is when we depart because of the time change getting over there, we land in Tel Aviv in the late afternoon or early evening. And so we'll have dinner and then we'll go to a hotel and rest. So the, the first two days are really travel oriented. Um, on the 20th, we focus on, on Galilee. So we'll have an opportunity to sail across the Sea of Galilee to visit Capernaum, uh, where the Beatitudes were delivered, um, the Church of the Primacy and Magdala. So it'll be a full day that day. Uh, the 21st, we shift to Cana, to Nazareth, to Tel Megiddo, to Caesarea, and then to Beit Shean, Jericho, and Qumran on the 22nd. Um, one thing I want to make sure to mention, earlier I mentioned uh, that there is a link to a registration page. There's a little bit more detail about each of the sites that we're visiting on that registration link. And so if you want to see a little bit more about some of those places, that's there for you to be able to take a look at. On the 23rd, we pivot. And the first part of the trip is in Galilee. The 23rd, we pivot towards Bethlehem and um, Jerusalem. And so um, Jesus's birthplace in the Church of the Nativity. Uh, and then we'll begin in the Jerusalem area. Um, the Jerusalem area will extend into the 24th, where we'll be in the city of David. We'll go to the um, Garden of Gethsemane um, to be able to walk the, um, the journey of Palm Sunday, which I think I'm personally looking forward to that a lot. Um, the 25th is designated as a free day. Um, Tim, I, I will tell you, this is part of being a newbie. Uh, I don't know this as well, but um, Tim has recommended highly that um, anybody participating on the trip do the optional uh, side trip to Masada in the Dead Sea. Um, Masada is, uh, was here, it's fortress, and it's apparently this like engineering wonder um, that's really pretty incredible. And then you also get to hang out at the Dead Sea, which is which is pretty good. Um, I believe there's a $75 charge to do that. If you choose not to, that's okay. You'll just have a free day in Jerusalem to shop and explore uh, Jerusalem on your own. On the 26th, uh, we'll be back in the old city of Jerusalem, so visiting the Western Wall, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and the Via Dolorosa. And then on the 27th, we get to have breakfast, uh, make some final arrangements, and then head home if you're choosing to and there, or if you're going to continue on the Egypt extension, uh, we'll head to Egypt from there. Um, that was a very quick, very sort of 10,000 foot overview of those locations and, and kind of the itinerary. Any questions about any of that that I could answer for us? Jonathan, I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
there were two different Egypt excursions afterwards. Which one are you referring to? Yeah, we'll get to that in just, it's, it's number one, um, but I'll, I'll uh, share that in just a moment. Okay, okay, I'll wait. Slide. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Any questions about the Holy Land itinerary? Um, so we're expecting that between uh, Herndon and Crossroads, we'll probably have somewhere in a range of 20 to 30 people who are traveling as a part of the group. That means that we'll all be on a bus together. Um, we'll share a common driver, a common guide, and that sort of thing. If this were to, uh, our understanding is if it were to balloon to where we had like 60 or 70 people, that would be a situation where we get separated into multiple different groups. But um, we're not anticipating that to happen. We're, we're thinking we're going to have a, a good group of a couple dozen uh, folks, and that that'll be a, a really good uh, travel size because it means that we'll be able to have some good interaction together, but also um, have some personal attention along the way, which will be um, a real gift. All right, let me tell you a little bit about the Egypt extension. So this is um, in the package piece that um, you'll see on the registration page. This is listed as Egypt extension one. Uh, this is really uh, meant to trace the exodus um, and to, to um, offer that segment of, of the Egypt experience. So um, for those who are participating in that, we'll wave goodbye to anybody that's flying home on the 27th, and then we'll uh, be going from Jerusalem down to Mount Sinai, uh, most famous for being the location where the Ten Commandments were given. Um, on the 28th, we'll continue to St. Catherine's Monastery, which is on the Sinai Peninsula, um, supposedly this very beautiful outlook to be able to see um, a lot of that area. The 29th for me is kind of the highlight and the reason for the whole thing. It's being able to do the route of the Exodus. So we'll literally be tracing um, from the, the uh, space of enslavement all the way into Cairo and then um, and to be able to follow uh, the route of the Exodus. I think that's gonna be a really powerful thing, especially again, mentioning uh, that the journey of the Exodus is gonna be what we're doing all Lent. Um, that'll be informing a lot of that for those of us coming from Hernan. Um, on the 30th, we'll see some of the um, kind of more famous uh, sites of the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx, Memphis and Saqqara, um, but being able to, to see some of Abraham's journey, um, which um, if, you've, if you're familiar with the first part of Exodus, that's a, a powerful story as well. Um, on the first, we'll be in Cairo doing uh, the ancient city and some additional pyramids. And then uh, May 2nd is the return to the US if you do the extension. So if you end up doing the, the regular trip and the extension, it's two whole weeks, leave on the 18th, which is a Tuesday, and you'd be back on May 2nd, which is also a Tuesday. Um, Melissa, does that clarify which uh, Egypt's trip we're doing? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, any, any questions about the Egypt extension? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, Lisa, go ahead and then mom and then will get you. Is the Egypt extension a different hotel and just one hotel? That is a good question. I'm going to write that one down um, because I think I think the answer is it's different hotels. Um, I don't I don't believe everything is centralized to where we we operate from home base and then go out every day, kind of like on the the to go back to the holy land piece when we're in galilee we're in one hotel the whole time and then when we move to jerusalem we're in one hotel the entire time there i believe we're in a couple of different hotels on the extension that's a good question i'll be sure to clarify that with eo um mom uh, that was my question <laughs> same thing any other questions joanne yeah um and this may get covered and this might be a later down the line question, um, but I know for uh, specifically in Israel, there are probably a little bit, in Egypt, there's a little bit more dress restriction for women. Um, sure. Will we be informed of that just prior? Yeah, just of course. To yeah, any kind of dress code yeah. or anything like that, we'll make sure to get appropriate information. Um, I'm not a, I'm not aware of anything specific that's been a part of our training to this point, but I'm sure there will be a couple of things that that will come up and we'll make sure we have all the information needed before we travel. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about the physicality of this trip. So this is, um, I, I've had a couple of questions from folks in our church who have said, hey, um, I have mobility issues. Is this a good trip for me? And the answer is maybe or maybe not. Um, so 
so the reality is uh, being able to walk a decent amount is pretty important to the to the trip. So we're we're not talking an excessive amount, but four to five miles a day over the entire day is is a reasonable expectation. Um, and one thing we we would do well to realize is that the the ground is not you know it's there's not a lot of like paved surfaces that are sort of just flat concrete. It's a lot of rocky terrain, and so being able to to withstand that kind of um, that kind of space is is really important. Um, the the other note is that um, Israel does not follow the same kind of ADA compliance that we have in the U.S. And so, if you find yourself in need of like a wheelchair or a walker or something like that, it may there may be some challenges that are a part of the trip. But um, for the most part, if you're if you find that you're able to to withstand some walking and um, and you know, just some some rocky ground. You should be very able to be a part of the trip with no issue. So costs. Uh, I wish this were free. Uh, it is not quite free, but um, it is a I think a relatively uh, reasonable uh, fee for the for the trip. So first off, uh, in the in the slide deck again, we'll drop this in the chat. There's a link to register. Um, one thing just to to do. If you so like for mom who was a part of Tim's presentation, if anybody is watching this from Crossroads, you're going to see that Tim has actually a different link than I do. Um, that's that's just part of how EO does uh, their their sort of record keeping. Um, it's it's up to you where you want to register. Um, if you want to register with with me, uh, the ID is six zero zero nine eight, and the tour is listed as HL twenty three. Um, and that information is just, it's when you go to the registration link that's at the bottom of the link that's embedded here, um, you'll find the places to input that. The total trip cost is $3,698. Um, and that's if you're paying cash or check. Um, you can also, I believe one of the ways that they accept payment is through um, an ACH transaction, which is a, that's a debit from your bank account, um, which is, so that's a digital way of, of being able to pay for your trip. Um, if you choose to pay by credit card, they do accept credit cards, but they they go ahead and assess the fee that they have to pay the credit card company to you. So that's about three and a half percent. The extension is an additional uh, one thousand ninety eight dollars. I can tell you, having just done all this with um, the trip and the extension and all the fees included, I believe the total cost with the extension is it's like five thousand and twenty dollars. Um, so it's just right at that that five thousand dollar price point. And all of that is based on a double occupancy. So what that means is within our whole groups so of the Crossroads Herndon combined group, um, we'll all be staying together um, and you will be with a roommate. So like, for example, if Melissa and George said, hey, we want to travel together, you can say, hey, this is who I want my roommate to be. And that's great. You, you, uh, if, if you were to choose to, you may not choose to do that. I want to presume that. Um, but if you're traveling as a solo person or, or something like that, so a couple of options, you can have EO will assign a roommate to you who will be from within the group. Um, and I, I assure you that the people at Crossroads are fine, just like the people of Herndon are fine. And we're all we're all good Methodists. Um, if you would desire to have a single occupancy room, that's something you can do. Uh, there's availability for that. There's just an additional fee that comes alongside it. And you can see that's eight hundred ninety eight dollars for the Holy Land part and then four hundred forty eight dollars for the Cairo extension. Um, I mentioned this earlier. The Masada Dead Sea Day is $75. And again, that's something uh, that we would highly recommend as a part of the as a part of the trip. There are a couple other things that are not prepaid costs that are uh, something that I'd, I'd want to make sure you're aware of just when we get there. It is it is a relatively all-inclusive trip. So breakfast and dinner is included, all of your lodging is included, all of your airfares included. And excuse me, entry to all the sites is included as well. The couple of things that aren't included are lunch. Uh, every day lunch is on our own. Um, there are, uh, EO works with localities to uh, try and pre-select restaurants that are gonna be uh, amenable to groups of our size and who are prepared to receive us. And on average, that's $15 a day, but that's not Exact. So there are going to be some days where maybe it's ten or twelve dollars, other days where maybe it's eighteen or twenty, um, but it's about fifteen dollars a day. And the restaurants that are used to accept American dollars. Um, tipping. The recommendation is that uh, that we 
basically prepare for about $10 a day. So that would be $6 for the guide, $4 for the driver. So we're there for nine days. Basic math is if you have $90 for the trip, that's that's about right. Um, if, if you're doing the extension, it'll be a little bit more. Um, all the buses are stocked with water. Um, that water is available. It's a it's a dollar um, to be able to just go and fill your your water bottle up or or to receive a water bottle from them. For those who are going on the extension, there is a border tax uh, that has to be paid at the border, and so that's not something that can be pre-assessed. That's one hundred thirty eight dollars, and so that's um, that's just something that we need to be prepared to to pay when we cross into Egypt. And so all told, just for those non prepaid costs. When you think about those costs and souvenirs and just kind of having some cash around, uh, EO recommends that you carry about $500 in cash. Um, it's what I understand is that the use of credit cards isn't non-existent, but it's not prevalent like it is here. And so being able to have cash is kind of an important um, piece. I don't, I, so I'll, I'll point to Melissa and George, you all have been before, is, is that your experience as well? It's a, it's a mixture. Um, so yes, have some cash. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing is when you, because you're overseas, sometimes credit cards will charge a foreign transaction fee on top of it and things like that. So, so having some cash is not a bad idea. Um, two other things related to costs that I want to mention before we, um, open for questions. There is an option to do ground only. Um, what that means is if, so for example, if you have a bunch of frequent flyer miles and you say like, hey, I wanna be able to cash those in to cover my airfare, um, or if you want full control over booking your airfare, you can do that. Um, and so that would mean that the ground only, then this is just for the Holy Land piece. I, I need to check back and see what the cost is for the extension if you do that, but that would be $2,538. Um, and that's, it's totally fine if you want to do that. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that if you were to take that route, you are also responsible for your transfers from the airport to the hotel, wherever we're staying, you have to get lined up with that. So, um, it's, you know, for some people, that's something they want to do. Um, just let me know if that's something you're, you're thinking about. My expectation is that on the whole, we're probably going to be flying together. A note about that is that EO uh, works on contract with um, airlines. And so what that means is they, once we've got everybody registered, I think registration closes 90 days out from the trip. That's when they work with the airlines to do ticketing. Um, given, I don't know how many of you have been watching the news lately about air travel and how, um, uh, what, what's a good word for it? adventurous it is these days. Um, and so what our EO uh, coach has told us is just to be prepared for flexibility on that, that, that what you're paying for in the airfare is to get there promptly and safely. Um, but there can be changes up to even up to like 72 hours ahead of the trip uh, to, to air travel. So just uh, that's something to be prepared for. The big thing right now is they're not, uh, they are not traveling through countries uh, so, for example, there is a, a direct flight from Dulles to Tel Aviv. That's what we will hope to be on. Um, that may not be what's available, though, and so we may have to connect through another country. Um, EO is trying not to use uh, travel to countries that have a lot of extra testing requirements for COVID and things like that. That would that would be my concern about sort of a more last minute uh, travel uh, reservation. Is you know if there's if there are tests that are needed or something like that could put you in a tight window. But it sounds like that's something that's being mitigated. And then there is an option for you to buy insurance. Uh, so if something comes up where you get pneumonia or um, you know if you have some life incident come up, you can uh, have that insurance. And that's an option for you when you are registering. <coughs> Excuse me, you don't have to, my understanding is you don't have to purchase it immediately, but you do have to purchase it before like the final payment uh, for the trip. So you'd, you'd have to do it, uh, I think by the, the 3rd of January um, is, is what that would look like. Any questions about the, the costs and registration process that I could answer? So a couple of logistics about how that works. Um, so when you follow that link, uh, there is a paper version, by the way, that you can pick up at the church office if you'd rather uh, mail in a registration. But 
it's a it's a hundred dollars to reserve your space. So you you fill out all of your information and and you send it in, and um, you can pay that either by um, a cash check, credit card, or like I I registered with PayPal and they took PayPal and that was fine. So um, anyways, that's a hundred dollars to reserve. Um, by the 18th of October, you have to contribute an additional $300 to your account. So what happens when you register, you're given an account, you're able to go in and uh, make additional payments as you feel led or able to. Um, by January 3rd, there's a, a pretty important uh, kind of cutoff there. That's where you have to have at least $1,800. That's about half the cost of the trip uh, is due. And that's so that they can begin the process of ticketing. Um, and then your full payment is due by February 2nd of 2023. So I, I know I said 90 days. Um, that's that's kind of around the 90 day um, window for the ticketing piece, but that full payment is due by February 2nd. Um, one of the reasons we didn't delay tonight and we continued forward is uh, there is a little bit of a discount for registering early. So if you're able to register in the next two weeks by the, um, or a little bit less than two weeks, if you register by the 18th of July, uh, there's a hundred dollar discount that drops by twenty five dollars each subsequent month. And if you register after October eighteenth, so that's six months ahead of the trip. If you're registering after that, you're going to pay full price. But any time before that, you get excuse me a little bit of a discount. Um, whenever you register, my understanding is you lock in the price at the time of when you make your full payment uh, for registration. So the advantage of going ahead and paying in full is it means there wouldn't be any fluctuation of price. Our EO rep has assured us that it is very, very rare for prices to change, but they are having to do some assessment for fuel um, because of the rise of gas prices. And so uh, there's a chance that there could be a fluctuation with a fuel surcharge that would never be more than $200 though, and likely closer to $100 additional fee if something were to happen there. Um, and that's just the closer we get to travel, we would know about something like that. But again, if you go ahead and pay, you lock in and, and that takes care of that. Um, so a couple of things, uh, if you don't have a passport yet, or if your passport is in need of renewal, I would recommend going ahead and taking care of that. Um, the wait time for passports is has gotten better. Um, but it's still, uh, it does take a little bit of time to get that turned around. So I'd recommend going ahead and uh, getting your passport. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can share this link again for the registration. Um, and just as you're ready, if you, if you feel like, hey, this is the right thing for us to do, um, this is definitely, in, in my opinion, the easiest way to, to do the registration is by visiting that link. You just scroll to the very bottom and there's a link that says to register now. There's only one departure date because we're only doing this once um, and it's uh, April 18th. And so um, so that's there and it's um, and you can also see more information about the um, the daily itinerary and that sort of thing. Uh, and you can even download a brochure if that's something you'd like to have. What questions can I answer for anyone at this point? Any um, ideas, thoughts? One thing we'll be doing um, as we get closer to the time of travel, um, probably like when we get to that six month mark, uh, I would imagine that we'll have a gathering of folks who have either registered or seem highly interested in attending the trip. Uh, and we'll, we'll likely do that uh, in person if we can uh, between Crossroads and Herndon just to uh, do a little bit of team building and get to know each other a little bit. Um, and we'll have some opportunities to make sure that we're familiar with one another before we travel. Um, and ultimately, I, I just think this is gonna be a great experience. I'm excited. Uh, I think, you know, just the idea of being able to to go with uh, people from our church and our larger community to me is a, a real gift and something that I think will be a really um, a, a big blessing for, for all of us who are able to attend. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay, any questions? I'm also gonna drop in the chat my email address for those who are watching the recording. You should be able to also pick up on the chat, but in case you don't, it's simple. It's just Jonathan J. Page at gmail.com. If you have any questions that come up, feel free to be in touch. I'd be happy to um, 
answer what I can, or uh, we've had a couple tonight that I'll be forwarding on to our EO representative and, uh, and we'll get those uh, taken care of in, in short order. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, I want to thank you for hanging out on Zoom and for uh, dealing with my pneumonia self. Um, I appreciate your interest and uh, I'm looking forward to this time and uh, we're praying that God would bless us into this night and into this life and all that we say and do that we might reflect the goodness of God's love. Amen, amen. <laughs>